It turns from measly 3% into a hefty 5.25%. Today, we're going to look at the Bank of America Business Advantage Customized Cash Rewards Card, the card for the purpose of the video. We'll look at this card using three different levels. Big favor before we dive into all of this, give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm, given that we're in a kind of a weird niche. And if you are someone new here and you like videos like this, then consider subscribing. The main point of this channel is to talk about cards, bank accounts, pretty much everything and anything you need to know for your business. Okay, starting off with level one, this is a no annual fee card, and I'd say that it's pretty competitive. It follows a three, two, one structure similar to the personal variation of it, but with different thresholds. And on the note of thresholds, we'll cover that in about 30 seconds. If we take a look at the multipliers though, I'd say it's pretty good. You're going to get 3% cash back in the category of your choice. This includes gas stations by default, office supply stores, travel, TV, telecom, and wireless, computer services, or business consulting services. On a side note, you can change this once a month and you can do this by logging into either the mobile app or online. You're also going to get 2% back on dining and 1% back on everything else. Right off the bat, it sounds pretty good, but the one issue is that there is a threshold for the two of the 3% categories. So for those two, you only get the elevated rate for the first $50,000 in combined spend for those two categories. After that, it's only going to be 1%. So for example, let's say you have gas stations as your category of choice for 3%. If you end up spending $50,000 on dining in Q1 and Q2, once Q3 rolls around and you care about the gas station part, it's already going to be used up. So it is a combined threshold and not an individual one. Still though, I would say it's a pretty strong card. 3% back, even if it is capped on these hard to get categories is kind of a no brainer. I'd say that there's a lot of reasons to not like Bank of America, but the card by itself right now doesn't seem like it's one of them. On a side note, if you're pretty sad with the card and you want to learn more, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com and also down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise it's a pretty easy way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. Okay, so for level two, we're going to compare it to other cards and talk about how to run it optimally. Right off the bat, I'd say that the 2% category isn't that exciting to me because there are other cards out there that get you 2% on everything. To be fair, it's a lot more interesting if you go to level three, but for level two's purpose, it doesn't really make sense. Also consider that you can use personal cards and then just do expenses afterwards to get reimbursed. In that case, there are a lot of other personal cards that just do a lot better for dining because that's a more common multiplier. Reminder that for the 3% categories, we have gas stations, office supply stores, travel, TV, telecom, and wireless, computer services, or business consulting. Of those, I'd probably cross out office supply stores and also TV, telecom, and wireless. The main reason is because there's cards like the Chase in Cash card that earn better for those categories. And yes, for level three, there are ways to earn more, but I feel like 5% without any additional work, without having to have a lot of assets of Bank of America is a pretty big win. Maybe have this card as an overflow option if you end up having a lot more spend in those categories, but even then I'd probably get a Chase Inc. Unlimited card and then do a product change to get a second Inc. Cash card. I feel like for travel at least, I tend to optimize both things because protections do play a pretty big role. It's one of those things that if you don't need, then it sounds like it's unnecessary, but once you do need it, then it becomes very essential and very helpful. Okay, so given this, I'd probably focus on the three remaining other categories and then build other cards around this one to complement it. The first one is gas, and this one is interesting because a lot of other cards don't focus on it. Or maybe they do, but it's on the personal side, and maybe it's a specialist card that's just not as flexible. Number two is computer services, which I think is very interesting if you have a startup or you have a very high technology cost. This covers software, networking, cloud services, and also data processing services. A good example would be AWS, but with AWS, I'd recommend something like the Chase Amazon card because that gets you 5% back, and there's also no cap for that. If you're someone that's not on AWS, if you're on Azure, then this is a pretty good alternative. To me, business consulting services is where it gets very interesting. This covers legal, accounting, PR, as well as tax preparation. I'd say that's not even only that though, it's pretty much any business that selects business consulting as a category for its services. So that could be marketing, that could be design agencies, maybe even editing services if you run a YouTube channel. If I were charging people for consultations, that'd probably be under this as well. I feel like if you're a business or a person that interacts with a lot of other small businesses, then this is probably your go-to category. In my head, that's why a lot of other cards and other issuers don't actually have this as a category because it's too easy. Obviously, it depends on you and your business, but I think it's a lot easier than you think. For context, I don't currently have this card, but this is the one category that's made me consider it. For level three, we're looking at how to maximize the rewards. One of the cool things about Bank of America is that they reward you for doing business with them and having a lot of your assets with them. If you go on their site, they have this handy little slider. If you have under 20K in assets with them, then you're in the normal tier. If you have between 20,000 and just under 50K, that's going to be gold tier. This gets you a 25% bonus on your rewards. 
And if you have between 50K and just under 100K, then that's platinum where you get a 50% boost. If you have 100K or more, then that's platinum honors where you get a 75% bonus. This means that 3% isn't 3%. So if gold, once you factor in the 25% boost, that's going to be 3.75%. With platinum and the 50% boost, that gets you to 4.5%. Platinum honors is pretty crazy at 75%. It pretty much means that your measly 3% turns into a pretty hefty 5.25%. On the personal side, 100K seems like a lot, but on the business side, for whatever reason, it seems a lot easier. A bit of me is surprised that the tiers for business are not a little bit higher than on the personal side. If you end up doing this, I'd probably also get the Business Advantage Unlimited Cash Rewards card. Basically, the unlimited version of this one. And to be fair, there also is that question of whether it's worth having your relationship, at least your banking one, with Bank of America. For credit cards, I'm more about the rewards and the rates and everything else. For the banking side, that comes into play, but also convenience and other factors. So if I need to wire money or something, I want it to be simple. I'll talk about that a bit more in a different video because I feel like that is a bit more of a nuanced take. But for me, at least, I feel like Bank of America is fine, but I have a hard time recommending them for their banking. At least a branch near me always feels like it's a mess. Every time I need to go in to do anything at all, it always takes an hour, and I generally avoid the bank for that reason. I have their cards, both personal and business, but banking and in branch stuff feels different. Your mileage may vary, so do what makes sense for you. Overall, I think this is a pretty solid card, especially because it's no annual fee, and also because it earns 3% back for a lot of normal business categories, but ones that other cards generally don't cover. Or some of them do, but you don't have to focus on those. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise, it's a huge way to help the channel, so thank you guys in advance. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a red circle emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart the comment and also respond, red being for Bank of America. My question for you is what are your thoughts on the card, and is it something that you have or you would consider? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider sharing it and subscribing, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.